Have you ever heard of the source of time? Legend has it that the ancient Egyptian founding god, the sun god, when he created the earth, he hid the source of time somewhere on earth. If you could access it, man could live forever and even control time. In order to find the source of time, from ancient times to the present day, many explorers have paid with their lives. But in the end, they all came up empty. But there are no absolutes. Take this man, for example. He did find the source of time, but he wasn't happy at all. Because the cave where the source of time is hidden is inhabited by terrible monsters. They don't just eat people. This one was so ruthless that he even ate himself. So how did this man get here? The story began a few days ago on a safari. His name is Dr. Harker. He was a professor of archaeology at a famous American university. One day he got an address from his grandfather. The address was the cave where the fountain of youth was hidden. Forty years ago, Professor Harker's parents left home to find the fountain in order to cure their daughter's illness. But they and their sister have not returned since. As soon as Professor Harker got the address, he set out on a journey. Soon he arrived at the cave where the fountain is located. At the bottom of the hill, in a clearing, he found his parents' car, in the back of the car, and he found his father's notebook. The notebook contained the legend of the fountain and its origins. He glanced up at the top of the hill, and there he saw a cave. If the notebook was correct, this cave must be the entrance to the fountain. Then Professor Harker took his equipment to the top of the mountain. He found the cave. He soon found some clues. At the entrance to the cave he saw a man dressed as a cowboy carrying an oil lamp and not moving. The cowboy's costume was similar to that of a Texas cowboy from the last century. Professor Harker subconsciously shouted twice, hello, but strangely, the cowboy didn't seem to hear or respond. Could this cowboy be a dummy? With curiosity, Professor Harker entered the cave. But as soon as he entered the cave, something unusual happened. He noticed something strange about the space around him. There was a resistance to the empty passage. He tried to feel it with his hand. And that was a bad thing. Professor Harker felt a transparent wall. Then he tried to smash the wall again, and the wall splashed with water. Against the great resistance, Professor Harker took another step forward, and then the screen went black. Two days later, Professor Hacker's students received a message from his assistant. Two days earlier, Professor Hacker had disappeared on a research trip. On receiving the news, the students decided to go to the mountains to look for Professor Hacker. And so the five of them drove to their destination. As soon as they got out of the car, they found the old, broken down truck. On the hub of the truck, they found a piece of twine attached to a rope. Nearby they found another cave. At the end of the cave there was another cliff that went vertically downwards. At first Alan, the assistant professor, thought that the professor had gone deeper into the cave. But strangely enough, when they pulled the rope up, they found the end of the rope had been cut off by someone. Based on the circumstances surrounding the cave, the students agreed that Professor Harker had gone into the cave, but they couldn't figure out why the professor had cut the rope. In order to find Professor Harker, the five men split into two teams. Bob was left outside ready to meet them. The remaining four searched along the ropes. Soon Alan and the four made it to the bottom of the cliff using the rope. But as soon as they hit the ground, they heard an eerie scream. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This is the thing. That's what was that. The cold, biting winds scared Anna and the others. She turned back to the three of them and discussed their decision. They decided to retreat to the ground before calling for help. But no sooner had Anna climbed up then, a strange thing happened again. Her rope suddenly snapped. There were no safety measures in place. Anna fell straight down. Ellen picked up the rope and looked. He was stunned. He saw that the rope had been cut very neatly. It was obvious that someone had cut it with a knife. He tried to pull another rope. The rope was also broken. The two ropes had the exact same cut. Could it be that someone had cut the rope on purpose? While they were struggling with this, there was a strange scream from the cave. Then Bob's frail voice came over the intercom. They met the sound and came around a corner. Under a boulder, they saw the dead Bob. Beside Bob was a severed rope. The rope was cut exactly like theirs. Then they found another hole above their heads. Near the hole was a severed piece of rope. It was clear that Bob had fallen from here. They then found Bob's DV in the rubble. Anna turned on the playback function on the DV. And after watching the footage, everyone was baffled. He had only been down for 20 minutes. But in Bob's DV, half a month had passed. While waiting, Bob spotted Professor Harker's car nearby. There was a vertical cave down in front of the car. He then found the diary in the car. It was written in the diary. This cave was actually the site of the Fountain of Youth. 
Legend has it that the fountain is the source of time. Time flows from here and controls the division of day and night. The cave was guarded by a servant of the sun god. And so it was. Bob waited outside alone for over 10 days. He thought Anna and the others were in danger. So he went into the cave to look for Anna and the others. But just as he came down from the cave, a strange thing happened. The sky suddenly changed from day to night faster. Then Bob's rope suddenly snapped. He just fell down the cave. Seeing the contents of the DV, everyone was frozen. Could this cave really be the source of time? Professor Harker had just entered the cave when something strange happened. The cowboy, who had just stopped still, disappeared in a flash. The next thing he heard was the cowboy scream. Scared, he rushed out of the cave. But when he came out, Professor Harker found that it was already dark. The dog that was outside was nowhere to be found. When he returned to the car, Something strange happened again. Professor Harker saw that his buggy had been turned into scrap metal, but he remembered that he had only been away for a few hours. How could it seem like decades had passed in the blink of an eye? Then he found Anna's backpack in the car. He guessed that Anna and the others might have gone into the cave too, to make sure Anna and the others were safe. Professor Harker had to go back to the cave again. Meanwhile, Anna and the others were stewing at the entrance to the cave. Unbelieving, Lily is ready to go out and take a look. She started climbing up the cliff face. After about 10 minutes of climbing, she finally made it up through the cave. But as soon as she got up she was stunned by what she saw. What had been a dense forest had turned into a wilderness. There was a sandstorm in the distance that covered the sky. Lily hurriedly pulled out her mobile phone to call for help. But she searched for it and found that it had no signal. Just as Lily was getting frustrated, she suddenly saw a huge triangular object floating near the moon. The spooky environment on Earth scared Lily. She had to turn around and head back to the cave. As soon as she returned, she handed the video she had captured on her phone to Alan. The three of them looked at the video and all three of them froze. It was then that they remembered Bob's DV. It seemed that the time in the cave was really different from the outside world. A few seconds down there could be a day up there. Although they had only been in for a few minutes, but decades could have passed outside. Or even hundreds of years. That would explain why the forest, why the forest has turned into a desert. Although they didn't know how many years had passed, but the four of them decided to leave the cave first. Then Lily took the rope and climbed up to the cave again. She was ready to go up and let the rope out to pull everyone out. But just then, a black rope suddenly went deeper into the cave. A man in a black protective suit climbed down the rope. At first Anna and the others thought it might be a rescue, but they yelled for a while. The mystery man didn't give them any attention. Just then, a dark figure jumped onto the mystery man's back. The two men then became entangled. The mystery man pulled a weapon out of nowhere. He stuck the dark figure to the ground with his backhand. It was only then that Anna and the others could see the stuck figure. He was a cloaked primitive. He still had undamaged fangs on his teeth. Because they didn't know what the mystery man and the dark figure really were. While they were fighting, Alan quietly led the trio back to a cave. Just as they arrived, Anna found two bodies on the ground. As they got closer they realized the two men were actually Professor Harker's parents. And on the other side of the cave, three primitive men were plowing a cowboy. The arrival of Anna and the four attracted the attention of the primitives. They rushed forward with their wolfsbane sticks, seeing the primitives approaching. Alan stepped forward. He told Anna to run first, and he turned back to hold the primitives back. But Alan had clearly overestimated himself. One of the primitives knocked him to the ground with a single blow. The two primitives on the ground raised a stone and added two more blows. And so Alan died instantly. Then the three primitives started to chase Anna again. But what they didn't know was that Anna and the others were in a small hole on the side. Seeing the primitives gone, Lily rushed back to look for Alan. Looking at the bloodied Alan, Lily was so frightened that she cried out. At that very moment, the mysterious man came back into the cave. He went straight to a pool of water. Then he took some spring water from it. After the bottle was filled, the mystery man was about to turn around and leave. But before he left he looked back at Lily. Then he threw the two of them into the pool. Before Lily could figure out what was going on, a miracle happened. The bloodied Alan came back to life. The water in the pool had a healing effect. But just at that moment, the primitive man had suddenly returned. Seeing the human in the pool, the primitives seemed very angry. They rushed forward and fought with the mysterious man. It was at this time that Alan found Professor Harker in another cave. At the end of the cave, he saw another, more bizarre scene. The camera shows two groups of people fighting. 
One group was the primitive people in the cave, and the other was some Spaniards. In the middle of the two groups is a waterfall. That waterfall must be the so-called source of time, because it's the source, so the time inside is very slow. And the mysterious man had killed all the primitives, but he himself was badly injured. Even his mask was ripped off. After the battle was over, the mystery man pressed a button on his arm. Finally two news items popped up on the mystery man's arm. One was a report of their disappearance. The other was about the imminent destruction of the Earth. The report that humans were going to emigrate to Mars. In the news, Lily saw the triangular-shaped spaceship. It turns out that the ship is the means of transportation for humans to leave Earth. After reading the report, Anna and the others were able to understand what was going on. But that's when the primitives came rushing back. In the panic, Lily and the others ran to the cave where Bob had fallen. They tried to get out by a ladder. But when they reached the cave entrance, Lily found that the cave had been flooded somehow. She just touched it with her hand. Then a pair of big hands suddenly pulled her in. Before Lily could react, a pair of big hands put a mask on her face. And the primitives in the cave find the ladder. One curious primitive touched it, but he inadvertently touched the ladder switch. Anna and the others, who were climbing up, fell down. Just when everyone thought they were finished, the wall of water was suddenly filled with fiber optic cables. These cables instantly pulled everyone in. Then a strangely dressed Lily emerged from the water. She manipulated the cables to save everyone who was trapped in the cave. It turns out that after Lily was pulled out, a year had passed outside. In that year, Lily learned about advanced technology with the humans of the future. Then she returned to the cave to save everyone. And in the depths of the cave, the war between the primitives and the Spaniards continues. Looking at the blue earth, everyone smiled as if they had been rescued from a disaster. I wonder if Professor Harker's parents will accept a son as old as Professor Harker. This is the end of the film. The film is called Time Trap. It's a very big brainy, cold film, although the film is not very expensive, but it's a surprisingly big brain. So if there was a cave like this, what would you like to do in it?